Well, good morning, church. Hope that you had an awesome Christmas with your family, with your friends. So great to worship with you this morning. Go ahead and stand up where you are as we sing of this joy this morning. Here we go.
was another in the fire standing next to me there was another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need reminding of how i've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there is another in the fire God, we praise you for that this morning. There's another in the fire. God, that you're with us, that you're for us. All my dead. All my dead left are dead beneath the waters. Declare this truth today. And I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall? Should I fall in the space between? What remains of me and this reckoning either way I won't bow to the things of this world and I know and I know I will never be alone there is another
Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Love that truth. And that last line, I, I'll come to joy in every battle because I know that's where you'll be. In Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13 says this Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? And then later it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Verse 15, through him let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And I don't, I don't know about you, but when I read that this week, I thought about all that Jesus had in heaven and that he completely bankrupted heaven and came down to earth for us, for you and for me. And that, and that act of humility is a call for our lives of how to live our lives humbly, because humbly he came to this earth that he created and I know I, 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 love, I love having people over. We, Marissa and I love having people over and, and sharing in, in, in what we have and what we've been gifted with. And that's awesome. And we love it so much. And I, I just, I think about just that, just get, like if someone came over and I just gave everything away that I had. You know, and, and that's, that's how I feel when I, when I read that this week. That's, that's who Jesus is, that's what Jesus does, and that he's the same, that he continues to give himself away. And I, I know so many times for me, I've been prideful, or I've had the, the Gollum, Gollum syndrome, it's the mine, you know, my precious, you know, thing, and get the crazy eyes and whatnot. But man, I, I, I just really fully believe that if we truly believe the words of that song, that there's another in the fire, regardless of what we're going through, that God's calling us to live more like him and to be more like him. And, I, and I've, I've felt this real, real heavy this week that, that it's not just about what we do for him, it's, but it's about who we are with him. So I wanna encourage you, church, as we move into this new year, and as we all say bye-bye and see you later to 2020, and we look forward to 2021, yeah. man, I, I am believing that in this year for you, that God's going to do amazing things through you, but only if you're willing to let him move within you and through you, which means we need to release some stuff, things that we're holding on to, and to have that reckless abandonment, just to give it all away. Give away our pride, give away things that we're holding on to that make us feel good about ourselves. And to allow God to use that. And because and, and God, I, I believe this, God wants to bless you in amazing ways, but we need to be willing to get rid of some things. So I just want to encourage you in this moment, right now as, as the band's playing, just to go before the Lord and to get raw before the Lord and, and create a space right now. Create a space right now knowing the things that we read that God's for you, He's with you, He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But right now just to go before the Lord and, and just to get raw and say, God, what is it, Father? What is it, what is it that I'm holding on to? Reveal that to me. And that's a scary prayer, but if we really want to go deeper and we believe more, more than just head knowledge of what we should say or what we should do, but get raw before the Lord, because God wants to know you. He doesn't want to know about what you know. He wants to know your heart. So right now in this moment, Father, we just come before you as your sons and as your daughters, God. And even though this, this last Sunday of 2020 looks different, and we're in our living rooms or our family rooms or wherever, Father. Maybe our kids are running around just like crazy, Father. I, I, just, I just ask right now in this moment, God, 
because I because I, I I want to be obedient, God, to where, to where you're leading. I, I want to just create this time and create this space, Father, for your sons, for your daughters, God, just to come before you and to lay it all out. Maybe it's a sin that we're holding on to. Maybe it's our pride that we're holding on to. Maybe it's a love for something that's not yours or from you. Selfishness. I don't know what it is, God, but you do, Father. And I just pray right now for radical obedience from your sons and from your daughters right now to lay it all before you. Because you are the God of renewal. You are the God of revival, Father. And you've done it before, and I believe that you're going to do it again and that you want to do it again, God. So I pray for a willingness from your sons and from your daughters, God, to say, say that you are good and I trust you. So I'm gonna lay it all at your feet. So let's take a little bit of time this morning, church, and just lay those things before the feet of Jesus.
never gonna let you're never gonna let me down tell it to your fear today you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down yeah you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down come on Just two days ago, we were celebrating and rejoicing at the birth of the Savior, and now we have the opportunity as a body of believers to gather around and remember the sacrifice of the Son. But He's the risen King. He's the one who's alive and at the right hand of the Father now. So as we gather for this time of communion, may it be a time of deep gratitude, of a humble heart, and of deep joy. You know, the gospel writers tell this story, but I love the way Luke records it. Because as we remember Jesus through Luke's account, it says that Jesus took the bread, broke it and passed it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat this. And as you do it, do it, do it in remembrance of me. So this morning, as we take this little piece of bread around our table or on our couch, let's remember Jesus, not just the Messiah that was born, but the risen Savior who's with the right hand of the Father right now. Let's do that together. Jesus also took the cup and poured it out and passed it around and said, this represents the blood of the new covenant, my blood that was shed and poured out for us, poured out for you and me for the forgiveness of our sins. So let's remember that as we drink together. Father, we come to you right now with grateful hearts, with full hearts. During this time of celebration, Father, we pause to remember what the end was, what the end game was, it wasn't to just come as a babe, but it was to sacrifice, to be the spotless lamb for the sins of the world. So Father, we remember that right now with grateful, grateful hearts, knowing that you died for us. You left heaven, you came here, and you sacrificed for us. Lord, for that we say thank you. And we remember you, Father. We remember what you did for us at this time. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you sent your son to pay our sin debt. And we remember that, Father. We remember that. Lord, also, we want to say thank you for the way you provide for us, for the way you give us material possessions. You give us a means 
to have a living, to have a life. And Father, thank you for that. And as we give as our tithes and offerings, and Lord, I just wanna say thank you for that. And I wanna just ask you to bless everyone who does that and gives in that way because it's, it's part of their worship, of our worship for you. Lord, we love you. And we do this out of grateful hearts. Father, we know that your work and your word will not come back empty. So Father, we do this also with a grateful heart, with anticipation of what the new year will bring because of this. So Father, again, we say thank you. And we just ask, we, we bless you, Lord, and we ask that you bless us back. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. Welcome to Cedar Creek Church, and this is the update. Good morning, church family. We hope you had an amazing Christmas, and thank you so much for joining us online this morning. We are so glad that you are here. We would love to know that you are with us this morning. So please comment below or take a selfie with your watch party. We miss you and want to see you and your family as you are worshiping together with us this morning. So go ahead and do it, like right now, and share on your social media pages. If today is your first time with us at Cedar Creek, please let us know online by commenting below or on the YouVersion Bible app. This allows our staff to connect with you throughout the week and answer any questions that you may have. Here at Cedar Creek Church, we exist to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus. To help you take your next step with Jesus, we've created an easy on-ramp for you to do this on our website. Go to www.cedarcreekchurch.com slash next steps. Fill out the form and a staff member will get back to you. It's never too late to take your next step with Jesus, and we want to partner with you with what God is doing in your life. Men, make plans to attend this year's men's conference at Lake James Christian Camp on Saturday, January 30th. Cost is $40, which includes two meals and a day of powerful worship and teaching. You can register online at www.ljca.org or by calling the camp office. We hope you will be able to make this great event. Today we conclude our Advent series, Advent of Hope, with a message by our lead minister, Greg Kraft, entitled, Living Hope. So be sure to get out your notebook, pen, coffee, and Bible, and let's do this. You can view today's message notes on the YouVersion Bible app under the events tab. And for all other events and information, you can visit us online at cedarcreekchurch.com. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to stay up to date on everything Cedar Creek. And this has been your Cedar Creek Update. Hey, good morning, church. Hey, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Only two days ago, we celebrated the birth of the Messiah. What, what a great time that was. I pray that you had a great time with your family. You're still having a great time Christmasing. Uh, we are concluding our Advent series right now, but really Advent ended at Christmas Eve. But if you notice the Advent wreath is still here, and here's why. I want us to pay attention to the Christ candle, which is the candle of love, and that's what kind of it all pulls together with that. Traditionally, this is lit on Christmas Eve, and these other candles kind of lead up to that. And today I want to talk about the living hope. We looked at hearing hope, observing hope, being present to hope, and experiencing hope. But today I want to talk about the living hope, and I want to talk about how, how all these come together. We looked at the hope that was given to us by the prophet Isaiah when he said, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. I want us to really 
hold on to that, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. That's what we were able to get from the prophet Isaiah. But what Luke records, what the angel said to Mary in Luke 1, verses 31 through 33, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So we have the greatness of his government in peace. There will be no end. The angel says of his kingdom, there will be no end. And also what the angel said to Joseph in Matthew chapter one. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. These are texts we've been looking at for the last four weeks. Isaiah, Luke, Matthew. His kingdom will not end, will have no ending, and he will save his people from their sins. That's the idea of Messiah, the Son of God, the one who will always be with us, the one who has always been with us, and the one that will be with us in eternity. Earlier, Brian had mentioned the text out of Hebrews 13, verse 8. I want to read that again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He pulls together all these pieces, the hope, the faith, the joy, the peace. He is all those wrapped together, but he's so much more. Advent is just the waiting. It's just the anticipation of the Savior. It's the anticipation of this hope, this living hope that we have. So why is it important to us to know that Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and forever? I'll tell you why. It's because we have a past. That's why we need Jesus. It's because we have a past. That's why we need Jesus. Jesus was in our yesterdays. He knows our sin. He knows our stuff. When humankind thought they could, they knew more than God and they sinned when they were tempted by the evil one and they sinned and it changed everything. We no longer live in the garden like we did. So we are sinners. Hopefully we're sinners saved by the grace of God, but we are sinners. We cannot, as Max Lucado says, it's not that we can't do good. It's just we can't keep from doing bad. And I think that's true. Because we have a past, we need Jesus today. Paul speaks to this several times, but I want us to look in the book of Romans. Now, now's the time to get out your Bible. Those other scriptures we've looked at several times, but now's the time to open up your scriptures or open up your apps. And I want us to go to Romans chapter 3. I want us to look at verses 21 through 24. And this is a well-known text, but I want us to look at it in the context of Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. And because we have a past, all of us have a past, we need Jesus. Romans 3, 21 says this, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. Verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. There's only one way to have this redemption. By the grace that was given to us and the redemption provided for us by Christ Jesus, by the sacrifice of Jesus. Because we have a past, we need Jesus. The second thing is because we have a now, That's why we need Jesus. Because we have a present, we need Jesus. We're living in this space, this liminal space right now between the the what is and what will be. Here we are. And this has been a tough space. Do you think we need Jesus now? I do. I need Jesus. I need him now, not just as Savior one time, 
but is Lord of my life now. And I find it's much easier to want Jesus to be my savior than be my Lord. I like the forgiveness part better than the lordship part. I don't know where you find yourself, but I do. But we have a now. We have doubts, we have fears, we have things that can cripple us if we don't have Jesus with us now. And I want us to look at some text that are real powerful with this. I want us to go over to Ephesians chapter one. And we have a lot of scripture this morning, but I think they're important for us to hold on to. In Ephesians chapter one, listen to these words, starting with verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, this hope that we've been called to, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion in every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the ones to come. So this Jesus, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, is the same power we have today. And it's far above all the rulers and authorities and the powers and those in our realm here that wants to undo us. It goes on to say in verse 22, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. I love that last verse. The fullness of him who fulfills what? Everything in every way. He is in our now. He is in the present. He's in the midst of all the things that are happening. That's the great thing about God. He's ever present all the time. Paul also writes, in his letter to the Philippians, verse three and through six out of chapter one, he says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So if God has started a work in you, he is working on it now and he will take it to completion. He will not leave us hanging because we have a now. He's still working with us today. You know, one of the best known chapters probably in all the New Testament is chapter eight, the book of Romans. And I love the way that starts out. Romans eight, verse one says this, there is, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. There is now no condemnation for us who are in Christ. And if you look at Romans 8 and you read through that, there is promise after promise. There is statement after statement about the goodness of God in our life now. I just want to hit just a few of these. Verse 8 says that we can please God. Verse 9 says we belong to him. Verse 10 says, our spirit's alive because of his righteousness. Verse 31, God is for us, so who can stand against us? Verse 35, we will never be separated from the love of Christ. Verse 38, powers will not separate us. Verse 39, no created thing will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So here's what I would like you to do the rest of 2020, starting with the 27th today and just read it every day. Read Romans 8 and hold on to those things in the nowness of why we need Jesus. What promises are there? That is such good news for us. That's because we have a living hope, a Jesus who was yesterday, today, and in the future and never changes, is always good, always righteous, always loving. So why else do we need Jesus? Because we have a future. We need Jesus. Jeremiah says this, Jeremiah 29, 
11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord's plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to give you hope. What have we been looking at for the last several weeks? Hope. That's something that sometimes seems in short supply, but it's something we need so desperately. It's knowing that things won't always be this way, that things can get better, that whatever thing is happening in my life, God knows. He's always known, and he will be with me walking through it. He goes on in verse 12 of Jeremiah 29 to say this, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get complacent in my relationship with Jesus. I can remember the historical Jesus. I can remember the Jesus of the Bible. And I can look forward to the Jesus in the future about being in heaven, but sometimes I I get lax in the now. And the future seems so far off that sometimes I don't actually pay attention to it. But that reminding me again is if I seek him and I call on him with all my heart, that makes the difference. In Isaiah 55, Isaiah writes this. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isn't that good news? This word that he sent out will not return empty. It will not be void, even though it might feel like it, even though we can't figure out exactly what it's going to do or what it means. It won't return void. It won't be empty. It will accomplish what he desires. Haven't you ever heard something in the scriptures or someone said something to you? And it kind of just in passing, you're like, yeah, that's good. But later on, the truth of it, was driven deep. That was the purpose, the desire that he had for that. Verse 12 says, You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will birth, will burst forth into song before you, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. There's a song that goes like that. You will go out with joy because this word will not come back void. It will accomplish what I want it to, what I need it to. Hebrews 10, verses 22 through 23 say say this. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. I, I don't really know what's all going on right now for all of us, but just the last part of that, sentence right there. For he who promised is faithful. You can always depend on God. He is always faithful. Romans 15, 13 says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust him. See, that's the living hope that we have. That's the completion that we look for. So because we have a past, we need Jesus. Because we have a now, we need Jesus. And because we have a future, we need Jesus. But to wrap that all up, because of Jesus, we have a living hope. We don't have a dead hope. We have a hope, this return to the Father, Jesus. And he's pleading our case for him. He is for us. He's not against us. He will never leave us or never forsake us. He is at the right hand of the Father pleading Greg's case and your case right now. He knows the hurts. He knows the things that are happening. We have this living hope. All this comes together. All this we've been walking through and leading up to It all points to Jesus. It's always pointed to Jesus. It's always pointed to him. All these scriptures we've been reading, the things from long ago, all this points to the promised one, to the Messiah, to Jesus.
You know, this message was one of those that I had thought about for a long time. Um, This living hope. Because I've had a time where I didn't have any. Do you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been there where you just, you don't have any hope? And even as a believer, you can, you can get there. And I have to keep going back and I have to keep grounding myself and saying, Greg, even when you don't feel it, it's still true. Even when I can't see it working right now, it's still true. And there's times it's almost like I have to go back and touch home base. I have to go back and say, yes, this is still right This is still true. There's still hope here. You know, things are never going to be right on this side, folks. And we know that. We know that here. But sometimes it's harder to get it here. But because of the living hope of Christ, he is with us every step of the way. He knows every hair in our head. He knows everything about us. And he loves us anyway. He knows how we're going to respond, how we're going to act. And he loves us anyway. He is there for us. And because of Jesus, we have a living hope. In 1 Peter 1, Peter's writing to a persecuted church. They're having a tough go of it. Their issues are different than ours, but they still were in a tough season. And this is what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. It's a pretty long text, but it's powerful. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Not a dead religion, not a dead God, but a living hope in the resurrected Christ. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. It will never diminish. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, because we're not there yet, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. We're in that space, but it will be revealed in God's time. And all this you greatly rejoice, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. And I know some of you have suffered grief in trials recently. It's it's been some difficult times. We'll probably always have some difficult times. Something will always be that way. These have come so that the proven genuineness of our faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Church, could that, could that be true of us? There's, there's truth in there, isn't it? We will have trials. And there is an inheritance kept for us that will be revealed in the right time. And we love him even though we haven't seen him. But I'll tell you how we do see him. Is the church how we can see him now? Through kindness, through someone who offers kindness to us. From the hug or the touch of a little child, the smile of a stranger. Those things that we sometimes can take for granted but we can see now. That's the living hope that we have. And here's what I want us to think about this morning, because we have looked at this journey for the last several weeks. Hearing hope, observing it, being present to it, and how we experience it. But maybe you're watching this morning and you haven't really thought much about this living hope. You're like, I love the idea of hope, but how do I know that this Jesus is real? How can can I trust this? And maybe this morning you're at that point where you're saying, "I, I need this. I believe this. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do, church. 
I'm gonna ask you to kind of continue with what Brian said earlier this morning. Checking our hearts, what do we need to surrender to him? What do we need to put away? What fear do we need to put away to step into this living hope? To surrender to him, to truly believe that Jesus is who he says he is that he is Messiah, he is Savior, he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is all our hope wrapped up together. Church, maybe we have to step out in faith and say, not only am I going to believe in Jesus, but I'm going to live for him as well. And maybe I'm gonna take it another notch and I'm gonna love like Jesus as well. I'm gonna step out of my comfort zone and sacrifice a little bit and love like Jesus loved. If, if that's you this morning, don't be scared to take that step. And if you've never made a decision for Jesus, let us know that. Reach out, reach out right now. Go to our website, click on the I'm new and go to the next steps and find out what you need to do. We will contact you. We will, we will make sure we get with you. Don't let another year go by without Jesus. As this one's coming to an end, don't let the next year go by without him. Step into this living hope, trusting him. And believer, if you're like me, I think it's time, sometimes we just need to take a fresh look at the Messiah, to be in wonder again. To not just let the calendar and and the days pass and things stay the same. So as the band sings about this living hope, I pray that the Holy Spirit works in all of us. And whatever it is we need to step into, that we step into it this morning, that we take that step of faith, that we surrender what we need to. We get rid of these things that's burdening us and holding us back. Because Satan's aware of what you're doing. And if you're trying to take a step towards Jesus, he's gonna be right there. Don't let that stop you because we have this hope that's above every power, every principality, every dominion, anything in this world is limited and powerless really next to Jesus. So as the band sings about this living hope, I pray and I ask the spirit to step into where you are, where I am and ask us this question, what, what, what would you have me do? Where do we need to move into now? Let the spirit speak to us as the band sings. Let's go ahead and stand together. Sing how great. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living who could who could imagine so great a mercy my heart could fathom such boundless grace Down from glory to where my sin and bear my shame. The cross, the cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior. 
journey that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me come on they came then came the to end the year with other than that truth right there. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls us his own. That is great news, folks. Church, we should be that. There is no better news than that. Amen to that. The King of Kings calls this his own. He came as a babe and he is the roaring lion who defeated sin and death and the grave. And because of that, because of that, we have a hope that will never fade or tarnish or spoil. That's right. Because of him and his goodness. So church, I pray that this morning that you just give it all to Jesus, that we get ready to go into this next year in confidence with this living hope that we have in Christ. There is no greater, there is nothing better. There's nothing else in your life that matters compared to that. Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the biggest thing, the best thing that we can do. And if you haven't, if you haven't yet, contact us. We want to walk with you as you step into this, this next step of your journey. Let us know we want to be with you in this. And I want to pray for us as a church a prayer of thanksgiving and celebration as we celebrate the Messiah, but as we remember the living hope that we have in the risen Christ right now. But before I pray and before we close this morning, I have, I have some news. Uh, we are planning to regather as a body in person January 10th Amen. of 2021. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now there'll probably be some different protocol that we have to follow and that'll be based on where the county fits as far as red or orange or whatever rules come with that. And part of the other reason waiting till the 10th is to let some of the holiday travel kind of calm down, everybody be back home and kind of settled in. But we're excited about gathering together as a body again in here, in the building. But we have been the church, church, even though we haven't been in this building, but we want to be able to do both, to be able to be present together, to love each other, to walk with each other, as we step into this living hope going into 2021. I am excited, church, about the next year and what God is going to do. I'm excited about the things he's done this year 
Even though they're harder to see, once we look close, they still are very bright and beautiful. We serve a good God who loves us. So church, I'm gonna pray. But I want you to know that we love you and we are here for you wherever you find yourself on this journey. Just kind of close your eyes and take a couple deep breaths and let all the stuff, all the busyness that's been happening just kind of fade away. And just be present to the one who has always been present to us. And let's just pray right now. Father, we say thank you. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving and celebration and praise to you. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you for the living hope that we have in him. We thank you that you loved us so much, that you made a way for us knowing that we couldn't do it on our own. And Father, we try, but we know that when we fall, you pick us up and you hug us and you dust us off. And you say, that's okay. My son covered that and you help us move on. So Lord, we say thank you. And Lord, we commit anew to you moving into 2021 to embrace your son like we never have before, to, to live our lives lit for you like never before. Father, to trust you like never before, knowing deep down that you were good and that we can trust you. So Father, we lift that up to you right now saying thank you. Thank you for your presence and your love throughout this last year and we look forward to the new. It's in the living hope, it's in the name of Jesus Christ, your son and our savior that I pray, amen. We love you.